Uh, TPUs work very fast, and so we need a way to get data to them very quickly. Having the different TPU cores trying to read out of the same data set incurs too much transfer time. And so instead, if we can send those individual shards to the TPU cores, they can read that data a lot faster. So whenever you are doing any kind of distributed training in uh, TensorFlow, it's nice to have a way to send parts of the data set um, to each individual worker. Um, and so in a TPU, they have multiple cores that do the computation uh, independently. Uh, and so what we'd like to do then is split the data set apart and then send pieces of the data set individually to each of those cores to save time on um, uh, getting the data set over just on uh, transfer time. Um, and so then TF records are just a, a way that TensorFlow has of um, serializing data. And so we can uh, split the data set up into individual TF records, a kind of binary file that then the, those TPU cores can retrieve. TF records are a binary file. And so we have to turn our data into bytes or uh, serialize the data. And if in Python, if we start off with a byte string, um, like here, we have a, a byte string um, then we can use our uh, TF record writer to just write that byte string uh, directly to a file. Um, and this works in a uh, context just like the ordinary Python file writer does. Uh, and so you can see here, we open up the context uh, and then write a couple of bytes. And then just using the ordinary Python open, we can read it back to kind of see what we had written. The um, format for these TF records, uh, you can see the data that we had written sort of here. Um, and then all this stuff surrounding it is some metadata. It records the length of the thing that we had written and then some uh, integrity checking. So that's the, uh, the TF record. And again, basically the idea is we have some byte strings, some serialized data, and then we can just write it to one of these TF record files. So then uh, the question is, uh, if we have some data, how do we serialize it? Uh, if we have uh, something like a tensor, anything that's represented as a tensor in, in TensorFlow, which generally will be any sort of uh, like a number or an array uh, or a string, that sort of stuff, that we can um, serialize using this method here, serialize tensor, and then read it back. And this kind of serialization will work for any kind of tensor, it's just a, kind of a generic uh, serialization method. And as we'll see later, um, if you have something like image data, you could uh, turn it into bytes using a special um, image encoding, like JPEG files, for instance. Um, so any kind of byte string um, can work. The TensorFlow serialized tensor will always work. Or if you have something like um, JPEGs, or if you have video, maybe you have video encoding, you could use something like that. So then here, we just had a, a little example of serializing something. Um, so we started off with a, created a, a tensor, serialized it, and then just uh, looked at it again. So then if we have a data set that contains byte strings, so if we have constructed in TensorFlow one of its data sets, we can also use the TF record writer um, in the uh, data module. This is a, a second way that we can write those TF records, uh, which is sometimes more convenient. So this is an example of this. We have here constructed a data set of some byte strings and then used the record writer from the data module to write this one. TensorFlow has a lot in it. It's a pretty complex piece of software. So I think um, what I've discovered is that there's usually a pretty easy and simple way of doing something, but it takes a little bit of work to figure out what that is. Here, if we have a data set composed of tensors, which is often the case, uh, we could just map that uh, serialized method over the data set. So just map it over the, the data set here and then write it with that uh, record writer. This was a little subsection that goes through a little bit about uh, another way that you can serialize your images to turn images into uh, byte strings. So um, again, you can always use the serialized tensor method that you've seen, or in that same IO module, TensorFlow also has encoding and decoding for a couple of image formats. Um, and so JPEG is usually pretty good, um, and they have the PNG files. Um, I believe there's also some support for audio, or for these, of course, you could also use you know, some other kind of external program if you had some other kind of Python library. So any way that you want to uh, serialize these could work. But I should say you do want to use something native to TensorFlow when you're uh, deserializing, uh, when you're reading them back again. Yeah, and so this was uh, kind of going through that, turning this image into a, a JPEG. 
So if we read some sample image here, this just loads it as a numpy array. Um, so we can use a matplotlib function, take a look at that. And then here we can see uh, using that uh, JPEG encoding, then we can display that encoded uh, JPEG file. So this is the JPEG byte string, and then just use that corresponding decode to read it back again. And then if you if your images are already encoded as JPEGs, um, there wouldn't necessarily be any reason to uh, decode them. Um, the reason you might decode them when you read them initially would be if you want to do some pre-processing, like resize them, and then encode them back again before you write it to the TF record. What we've uh, seen so far is how to serialize just uh, single tensors. But if you have structured data, which is almost always the case in machine learning, um, well, how do we serialize something like that? Well, TensorFlow includes this example, um, we call it data structure, that we can use to write that structured data into. Um, it's a record format, sort of like a Python dict or like, a, like JSON. It just has some extra um, information about the data. So TensorFlow knows what it's getting. Each example you could think about as just a single observation in the data set. And so you could think about it like a single row of a table, like a single row of a CSV file or something. For images, what we would have then would be like an image and a label if you're doing like a classification problem. Let me jump down here so you can see the structure of this thing. So it's a little bit complicated, but it's just this uh, sort of nice hierarchical record format. Um, the entire thing is wrapped in this features structure, and we're just constructing a little uh, dictionary of um, the data that we'll keep. So an image, a label, and then the uh, name for that class. And then for each one of those features, we'll wrap that in its own feature. Here, like the image, uh, there's our feature. And then here's the uh, serialized image that we had. And then uh, in, inside of that feature, we need to describe it. So we have three different options. It can be a byte string, um, it can be a float, uh, or it can be an integer. Um, and then it, it saves them as a list. Typically, we just want to have like a single element. But if you had more, um, like several labels at a time, you could do that too. Yeah, so that this dictionary class name, our byte string, uh, our encoded image, and then our label. And if you want to see it all at once, you can wrap this thing in a function. And then you can pass in your data. And then using this method that's built into the example, you can take that example and then serialize that whole thing. So there's one technical point that uh, is a little bit tricky that we need to be aware of. This example function that we have up here, you can see I included this numpy method to get the byte string back out of this tensor again. Unfortunately, that means that we'll have to do a little bit of extra work if we want to map it over a data set. What's happening is that the data set needs to run in graph mode and so it needs to keep it wants to keep everything as a tensor uh, and so it doesn't like it if we try to convert it back to numpy and so to tell it that it's okay that go ahead and, and do that anyway we can wrap it with this little extra method and so if you want to map it over a data set to serialize you could do it this way in the walkthrough i mentioned uh i used the second way where we could use that IOTF record um, and we could avoid having to avoid that technicality now uh if we written everything as TF records. So how do we deserialize our examples? So to make sure that TensorFlow knows uh, what kind of data to expect, um, we give it a little feature description here. And so for each one of our features, we just give it a description. Um, and there's either a fixed length feature, which is what all of ours are, and then there's some other options you can look into too. And then it has this parsing function. Um, so after it's serialized, just read it back again with uh, your parse method. 